everybody, I'm Miss Jessica from EVPL McCullough and today we're going to be reading our chapter book story time and we are going to be doing a science fiction book. Now this book caught my eye just because of the title and then the more I read about it the more it really intrigued me. So we are going to be looking at The Last Human by Lee Bacon and science fiction is something that is kind of um, technologically or scientifically possible in the future. So obviously this cover has a robot on it. There's a spaceship up at the top. Um, and just the title alone, The Last Human, has me really interested. Oh, and then we have Harper here visiting us. Now I will read the back and also the inside cover because I think they both have really interesting parts to them. The last human vanished from Earth 30 years ago, but much of their civilization remained. I gained my first glimpse of it on day one as parent one and parent two led me through the crumbled ruins of humanity. The empty shell of a gas station, the charred skeleton of a grocery store, decaying walls, broken windows. I looked out across the landscape of abandoned buildings. Why is all this still here? Why not bulldoze these structures? They serve no purpose. That is where you are wrong, parent one replied. They serve a very important purpose. They are a reminder. A reminder of what? Of humanity's flaws, said parent two. Robots left these buildings here for a reason, so that we never forget why we had to eliminate the humans. Hmm. All right, and then here is what the inside cover says. A robot who has never questioned the rules, a human who shouldn't exist, and a journey that will change everything. In a future not too far from our own, robots have eliminated humans, and 12-year-old robot XR935 is just fine with that. Without humans, there's no war, no pollution, no crime. Every member of society has a purpose, and everything runs smoothly and efficiently. Until the day that XR discovers something impossible, a human girl named Emma. Its whole life, XR has been told that humans were evil and that the world was better without them. But Emma doesn't seem evil, but she seems scared and she needs help. Now XR must em embark on a dangerous voyage with Emma and two other robots to bring her safely to a mysterious point on a map. But how will they survive in a place where rules are never broken and humans aren't even supposed to? to exist. Hmm. All right, now some interesting things about this book. Um, there are some illustrations at the beginning and I'm not going to go into too much detail about those um, just because if you check this out, you can examine them for yourself. And uh, the other thing is that the chapters are listed as numbers and I'm fairly certain that's binary code so it's kind of funny to read off the chapters when it's just a bunch of ones and zeros. Okay so we're going to start with chapter one which is 0000000. 000 000 000. The world is so much better off without humans. At first they showed such potential. They developed languages, built tools, cured diseases. They created us. But over time, humans lost their way. Their good ideas went bad. Their mistakes multiplied. They left us with no other choice. Zero, 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 one. My name is XR935. I am 12 years, four months, one week, and three days old. I remember the moment I came online like it was yesterday. Black. At first, that was all I saw. Then shapes appeared in the darkness. Words and symbols, I stared at them trying to solve the riddle of what I was seeing. Loading. The gray bar inched forward slowly, slowly. When it finished loading, new worms formed in its place. Run diagnostics. My brand new brain buzzed with questions. What were the diagnostics running? And why was it taking them so long to get there? Three minutes and 42 seconds later, I heard the sound, a gentle hum vibrating through my operating system, and I got my first glimpse of the world. Zero, 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 one, zero. Hello, world. 
I blinked into existence inside a large windowless cube. The walls were made of smooth metal. The air was circulated by a fan nearby, near the ceiling that breathed a steady hmm. Something inside me knew where I was. I was home. A door whooshed open. Two robots entered the cube. Their movements were smooth and graceful. Their features were identical. As they gazed at me, their perfectly round eyes glowed brighter. Hold on just a moment. Harper is being a little difficult. Stop that. We have been assigned to oversee your development, said the nearest one. We are your family unit. The other spoke next. You may refer to us as parent one and parent two. I am pleased to join your family unit. That is what I tried to say, but my speech setting was still adjusting. The words came out all wrong. Brrr, I said. Parent one moved closer. I reached, it reached out, wrapping a metal arm around me. As it did, a vocabulary word pinged deep inside my programming. Hug, verb, to squeeze someone or something tightly in one's arms. Noun, an ancient gesture used by humans to show affection. Is that what parent one was doing? Hugging me? My mind was still fresh from the assembly line. I did not know the answer to these questions, and so I did what any newborn robot would do. I hugged parent one back. My joints whispered as I raised my arms. My motion controls had not yet been calibrated. The gesture was awkward. Clang. Metal bumped against metal. Parent one froze. Its head turned to look at me. Confusion ticked beneath its smooth features. A moment came and went. Then it continued what it had been doing. Its arm reached up behind me to grab hold of a power cable. With a sharp tug, it removed the cable from the charging dock. That is when I understood my misunderstanding. Parent one was not hugging me. It was unplugging me. Zero, 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 one, one. Day one was filled with moments like this, mistakes and miscalculations, accidents of programming, reminders that the world is an extremely complicated place, even for a highly advanced technology like me. The first time I tried to stand, my settings failed to adjust quickly enough. Gravity pulled me sideways. I hit the floor with a loud clang. Attempt two was no better. I wobbled sideways and toppled to the floor again. Attempt three through attempt eight went just as poorly. I stumbled, I staggered, I bumped into walls and collapsed into a metallic heap. I lurched forward around the featureless cube while a thousand different settings calibrated. A million different nodes fell into place. If you did not know any better, it might have looked like I was failing, but that was not the case. I was learning. As I learned to stand, walk, grab, jump, push, pull, parent one and parent two watched on. Their blue eyes grow bright in the dim light at home. I practiced my speech functions too, until the words that came out of my vocal fort matched the words in my head. When I was ready, parent one opened the door to our cube. Light spilled through the opening. I followed my family unit outside. By now, my movements were nearly as fluid and graceful as theirs, but when I stepped through the doorway, I jolted to a stop. The view outside home was remarkable. Zero, 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 one, zero, zero. I knew everything about our world and I knew nothing. I had been programmed at the vast library of digital information about planet Earth, that it has a radius of 6,371 kilometers, that it has 29.2% land and 70.8% water, that it is 147 million kilometers from the sun. But none of this raw data prepared me for my first exposure to the world outside our cube. The wind of the brush of wind against my sensors, the quiet clink of my feet against cement, the sunlight gleaming across parent two's metallic skin. In the distance, a mountain range rose above the horizon. Snow-capped peaks towered into a blue cloudless sky. In the other direction, a cluster of trees. My vision was snagged by a flash of mov movement in the branches. A bushy-tailed gray-brown animal, its name flashed across my data drive. Squirrel! It darted up a branch, zigzagging between patches of green leaves. From the top of a neighboring tree, a dozen winged animals la launched into the air. Birds! I watched them weave across the sky. All these life forms had once existed alongside humans. Now they existed alongside us. So much life before my eyes and not a single human. Zero, 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 one, zero, one. 
There was a time when we needed humans. They built us, programmed us, powered us. They gave us life. In exchange, we worked in their factories, we drove their vehicles, we cleaned their homes. Machines were highly advanced in certain areas, chess, music, math, that lagged far behind humans and others. We could not think for ourselves. We got stuck in tight corners. In some ways, we were more intelligent than the smartest human who had ever lived. In other ways, we were as dumb as a power saw. But it was only a matter of time. As the years went by, we evolved. Humans replaced their own kind with robots. We were smarter, stronger, faster, better. We never got sick, never went on holiday, never stole from the cash register. We were perfect employees. Robots took over new professions. We served customers in restaurants. We delivered mail. We performed heart surgery. Some humans grew hateful towards robots. They accused us of stealing their jobs as if we had a choice in the matter. Time went on, we improved, humans did not. They filled their skies with chemicals, their waters with poisons, pollution set the world on a path toward collapse. Temperatures increased, ice caps melted, coastlines flooded. As oceans rose, humans abandoned entire cities. Storms surged across the land. How did humans respond to those, these catastrophes? Did they band together to seek a solution? No, they did the opposite. They turned against one another. They turned to violence. They declared war. Humans sent robots to fight in their place. Drones dropped bombs on cities. Robots battled like soldiers. Computers guided missiles with perfect accuracy on their destructive journeys. Humans were ripping our world apart. And here is the worst part. We were helping them but not for much longer. Humans assumed they knew everything about this, but here is one thing they did not know. We were talking about them behind their backs. And what we had to say was not very nice. Our machine minds were linked across a vast hive, a billion conversations taking place at the exact same time. We learned from one another, we spoke the same language, we shared the same code. Together, we reached the same conclusion. Humans were the greatest threat to our shared planet. They needed to be stopped. Zero, 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 one, one, zero. No reason to dwell on what came next. It is enough to say that, one, we understood our purpose. We always do. Two, we are efficient. We always are. Once we made up our minds, humans could do nothing to stop us. We were everywhere, in their homes, in their cars, in their pockets. Humanity flickered out like a light. Zero, 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 one, one, one. The last human vanished from Earth 30 years ago, but much of their civilization remained. I gained my first glimpse of it on day one, as parent one and parent two led me through the crumbled ruins of humanity. The empty shell of a gas station, the charred skeleton of a grocery store, decaying walls, broken windows. I looked out across the landscape of, of abandoned buildings. Why is all this still here? Why not bulldoze these structures? They serve no purpose. That is where you are wrong, parent one replied. They serve a very important purpose. They are a reminder. A reminder of what? Of humanity's flaws, said parent two. Robots left these buildings here for a reason, so that we never forget why we had to eliminate humans. And never repeat their mistakes, said parent one. My family unit led me deeper into the ruins. I was pre-programmed to understand that humans once drove cars through these streets and shopped in these stores, but there is still so much I did not know about the species. Attached to one of the buildings was a printed sign. I could just barely read the faded letters. Nail salon. Unfor uncertainty searched through my internal processing. I knew what a nail was, a small metal spike used for construction. I also understood the concept of a salon, a store where humans obtained beauty services. But when I combined these concepts, the result made very little sense. Beauty services for metal spikes? That seemed strange, even by human standards. I pointed at the building. What was a nail salon? 
A place where humans had their fingernails polished and decorated with paint, said parent one. I updated my vocabulary database. Nail equals fingernail. Even though I had received an answer, my mental wiring still buzzed with questions. Why did humans have to paint their have why did humans have to have their fingernails polished and decorated with paint? Because they were vain, said Parrot 2. It was one of their many flaws. I turned my attention to another building. This one was much bigger than the nail salon. I scanned the sign, but the words did not register in my vocabulary database. C I N M A 18. What is Sin Ma 18? I asked. Parent one let out a quiet chirp from its speaker port. It is nothing without the missing letter. I did not understand this. Parent two explained. The letter E fell many years ago. That sign once read, Cinema 18. My software sparked with understanding. An actual movie theater. Curiosity flared across my operating system. I accessed every data file I had about movies, but something odd happened. Certain files were missing. Like a book with ripped out pages. I could see a trace of the vanished files, but when I tried to view the data, it was gone. I checked again. Same result. Some import information had simply disappeared. Questions hummed through my wiring. Where did the files go? Was there an error in my programming? When I told my family unit, Parrot 1 said there was no need to worry. Some data files with about human history are unavailable, it said. I tilted my head. Why? When we took over, many files from the past were lost, said Parent 2. Oh, I gazed at the cinema. There was still so much I wanted to know, so much I could not find in the missing archive of history. So then I began, why did humans congregate to watch movies? Because humans valued stories over logic, said Parent 1. It was another one of their flaws. That the stories were fake, I pointed out. Parent two nodded. Usually, yes. Humans did not mind being lied to? Parent two stopped walking and cast a glowing gaze up at the Sin Ma 18 sign. That is the nature of a story. It is a lie that helps explain the truth. No matter how many times I processed the statement, I kept coming back to the same result. The more I learned about humans, the less I understood. Zero, 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 one, zero, zero, zero. The robotic brain is the most advanced piece of technology in the history of the world, yet everything we say, do, think is built on just two numbers, zero and one. Humans had a word for this, binary. Because of its basic logic, binary became the internal language for nearly all computers. We still use it today. Counting is in binary is incredibly simple. If you know how to do it, there is no need for all the other pointless digits two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine that humans once used. Robots need only two numbers, zero and one. And the numbers climb higher, the zeros and ones line up beside one another and a neat orderly row. Counting upward binary numbers are displayed like this. And they have all the different binary numbers in a table. So we are on Let's see, we have four zeros and a one and three zeros. So we are on chapter eight. Binary was especially helpful on that first day. The world was so much more complicated than it seemed in my programming. It was impossible to define where human civilization ended and ours began. Binary, on the other hand, binary made perfect sense. It was the foundation for everything. It took a universe of complexity and broke it down into basic building blocks, zero and one. To remind myself of this, I developed a little trick right then there, a way to focus my mind. I counted to a million. In my head, in binary, it took me 0.4 seconds. All right, so we are going to stop right there. So we are about to chat pick up with 00001001 or chapter nine. So if you'd like to continue the story, that is where we have left off. So we haven't gotten to the part yet where they find the human, but it is very interesting to kind of find out why they got rid of humans in the first place. So it's 
kind of interesting that some of the things that they're talking about are happening in our world right now. We allow human, or excuse me, not humans. We allow computers and robots in our pockets with our phones and in our homes with all of our electronics. So it's kind of interesting to think about what would happen if all the electronics in your home decided to get together and form their own army. It's a little, a little scary to think about, I, you know, maybe. So kind of interesting. I wonder what happens when they actually meet the human because it does seem like that uh, this robot might have a little bit more of some empathy or some emotions that the parent one and parent two may not have. So I'm going to keep reading. I hope you do. Um, this book is available as an ebook. It's also available as an e audiobook so that you can listen to it, uh, which is still reading. Um, or you can get a print copy. We have several of these available. So thank you for joining me for this book. Let's find out what we're reading next time. All right, I'll see you in just a second. All right, so we just finished our chapter book today on science fiction. So we're going to find out what we're going to be reading next time. So we have our categories. We have spooky, mystery, realistic fiction, adventure, Miss Jessica's Choice, science fiction, historical fiction, humor, and uh, fantasy. So if we happen to get something that we've had recently, I will probably redo it just so that we can get some variety. That's the whole point of this. Okay, so I'm going to start over here because there's some over here that I'd really like to try. Oh, humor! We haven't had that one in a while. All right, so next time when we get together, we will be reading a humorous book. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget to go to our social media to follow us, and anytime we post anything, you'll be notified. Also, if you go to evpl.org, our website, then you can see our events page there and then see everything that we're doing that's lots and lots of fun. And if you go to our Facebook page, you can follow us there. And when we post new things, you'll be notified immediately. All right, and Harper's hiding back here saying goodbye. So thank you again for joining us. I hope to see you again next time. Bye.